We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. We have met many different farmers in different regions who have had expert advice on how to take care of their farms and become even more better farmers. We decided to go back and check on how some of them were faring on. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hey. Oh, yeah. Very fine, see. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm happy to see you. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Mama. Hey. How are you? Hello. Hello. How are you? We are back welcome, at George welcome. and Lucy's farm. You remember them? Meet George, Lucy, Boniface, Samuel, Lydia, and Mary, and little niece Wamboi. They've lived on the Shamba for 16 years and would love some expert advice on all their problems. So now, George, what problems do you go through in your farm? Potatoes. It's also a problem because uh, when uh, there are no lanes and I have no uh, method of uh, irrigating, mm -hmm. so I go without the potatoes. Okay. Yeah. And whose chickens are those? I can hear chickens. Those mm -hmm. are my chickens. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, I take them and I keep them to, uh, uh, to Mama's uh, kitchen. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because Lucy, I have what no you're saying is true. He takes his chicken in your kitchen. <laughs> so George, how has it been? Uh, Tony, things have been very good since last year when you were here and gave me um, expert uh, advice. And you, <coughs> Lucy, how is the kitchen? Very, very, very good. Very um, good. So Tony, let's see how the kitchen is. Good. Lucy, mm. come and show me. George, last time we were here, you were taught about potatoes. Now, how has it been? Uh, I was taught um, the, uh, how to go about it. One, to use the uh, satisfied seeds, use of fertilizer, uh, collect spacing, and uh, spraying, and that one has doubled my yield. Doubled your yield? Collect. Let's follow Gerard's recommendations on how to plant potatoes with a new technology to get the best results. First, prepare the land. Then mark a row with twine and make a furrow. Measure 75 centimeters or two and a half steps from the first row with a stick and make another furrow. Apply manure in the furrows. Then mix one kilogram of DAP with five grams of black magic and sprinkle the mixture into the furrows. This will make the potatoes grow well. Place the potato seeds or tubers with the sprouts up and to the depth of twice the size of the seed. 30 centimeters or one step apart along the furrow. Mix a cocktail of Vitazine, Echo Tea, and black magic with 10 liters of water. And using a pump, drench the tubers. Then cover. Plant in this way and you'll be surprised and pleased with the results. Remember, you need to mix 50 kilograms of DAP fertilizer with 2.5 kilograms of black magic. Black magic binds the fertilizer and helps plants get what they need from it. This is enough for one acre. In 20 liters of water, mix together 5 grams of Eco Tea with 10 milliliters Vitazyme. The Eco Tea helps in growth and Vitazyme helps the plant grow, especially the roots. When the plants are 6 centimeters high or the length of your pointing finger, add them up and keep adding them up as the plant grows bigger. The ridges provide space for the tuber's expansion and maintains water for extra growth. And how much would it cost you to plant an eighth of an acre using these new methods? Well, 
You can use your own potato seed from the shamba if they are free from diseases, but better to buy from the local research stations such as curry or their recommended suppliers. You will need about 50 kilograms of fertilizer to start with and then top dress with another 50 kilograms. This basic outlay plus applying other recommended practices like proper disease control could double your yield easily. How much were you getting before the expert advice? I was getting uh, close to 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Yeah. And what about now? Oh, Tony, I'm able to get up to 25 bucks now per acre. 25 bucks per acre? Correct. And you used to get 10 before that? That's it. Yeah. Wow. This new method will cost a bit more than the old method of planting potatoes. Let's take a look. Although the cost of buying the nutrients and fertilizer for this new method is more than the old method, the increase in production will make up for this. It is estimated to have at least 25 bags per acre. Since doubling up your yields, mm -hmm. what other developments have you done in your farm? I was able to sell part of uh, the potatoes that uh, I harvested. Mm -hmm. And with those funds, I was able to put up uh, electricity. I'm on power now. You're on power now? Correct. Wow, wow. Let me see. Like, oh, wow, that's, that looks great. Yeah. You managed to do that? I managed to do that. From your potatoes? Exactly. Well done. Well done. Brilliant. So, in George's case, his production went up from 10 bags to 25 bags. Assuming a bag of potatoes is going for 2,800 shillings, so, 10 bags at 2,800 shillings is 28,000 shillings. 25 bags at 2,800 shillings is 70,000 shillings. Minus the cost for buying fertilizer nutrients, which is 20,646, George made a profit of 49,354 shillings. Lucy, yeah. why didn't you like the chickens in the kitchen? I went on to ask her what she would like us to do in her kitchen if she had a choice. Mm. We'll see what we can do. But improvements in Lucy's kitchen are going full steam ahead. Take this Kisasa Jikos being constructed by Joseph of the Youth Initiative. They are particularly economical on the use of firewood and a huge improvement on Lucy's old Jiko. Check your local supplier for Jikos like this. They're cheap and easy to install. In Lucy's kitchen, bricks are being used to place them at a good height for cooking, but you can also use clay. You will use a third less wood than the old Jikos or having a fire on the floor and will make much less smoke, which is good for your health. Such an improvement. Lucy should love them. So tell me, Lucy, have you been enjoying the new Jiko? Muno, 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 muno. Uh huh. Now we are going to make new car. We are going to go to the market. Uh huh. 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 Uh Nice shells. Yeah, yeah. And the window, there's no smoke now? My son is a little bit of 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 a common way of cooking using the three stone is not the best as it loses a lot of heat on the side and also uses a lot of firewood. It also produces a lot of smoke that is not good for your health. The Maendeleo Kisasa Jiko is a simple stove that cooks food quicker, 
uses a third less firewood and makes much less smoke. So it is better for your health. We are back here at Kabatini, a few kilometers from Nakuru, to check on Lydia and see how our shamba is shaping up. Let's go meet her. Lydia, yes. how are you? Good. It's good to be back here again. Mm -hmm. So Lydia, tell me, how has your life changed since you were last here? I have so many customers these days. Really? Yeah. So you're doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. And what other achievements have you had in your life? Since I have started drying these chilies, I have so many hotels. Uh, they want my chili mm -hmm. and I used to supply them a week. Ah, mm -hmm. so you're supplying hotels with your chilies? Uh, my life has changed already because I have a lot of money and I, have, I managed to take my child to, the, to a boarding school. Aha. You taught me how to dry my chilies and mm. now I'm making money. Lydia, do you also sell the vegetables that you dry, like, uh, you know, skuma wikis, the, 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 the cabbages and even amaranth? Do you sell them also? Yeah, I sell them to the supermarket and some to my friends. Those which I have already dried. Uh -huh. yeah. Is it good business? Yeah, it's a good business because my customers like them. And, and they also used to ask me more, but my dryer here is very small to dry them. But I'll make it big so that it can hold much so that I can meet my, my so that I can meet my order. Ah, wow. Yeah. Wow. Before, Lydia used to sell a sack of chilies at 150 shillings. Currently, she now sells the dried chilies of 250 grams at 300 shillings, which means she makes a profit. Sorghum is a drought resistant crop, good for nutrition and market. Let's remember how Joseph was given expert advice. Mr. Titus Moasia has loads of advice on planting and marketing sorghum. We are introducing some varieties of crops which can do well in this arid area. For example, if we use um, sorghum, it will do well in the short rains and you'll get enough yield with the short rain we are experiencing. We can also use manure and fertilizers in our soil to improve it. You know, this type of new crops is introducing, like many sorghum. Mm -hmm. We have forgotten how to, to plant it. I can show you the right variety certified seed of sorghum and the methods used to plant and even marketing program. Oh, great. Then let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. So, let's see. Did they follow the expert advice? There you are, Angela. Nah. This is your sorghum. Yeah. Looks a lot. Which variety is this? Gadam. Gadam. Yeah. Is this the one you're planting before? Hapo kitamu nilikuwa nikipanda. Ile nyingine inaitwa Serenium. Serenium. Yeah. How much were you getting from that? I was getting about... Uh, uh, one, one bag of, of 13. One bag from quarter of an acre. Mm. And by planting this new variety of gadam, what are you getting? This has done well. Mm -hmm. The reason why I've got uh, almost three all. Let me see two bags. Two bags? Yeah. So you are doubling up. Uh, How much per kilo for the serenium? It was so low because it was. One kg, they were buying by eight shillings. Eight shillings a kg? Yeah. And this new variety? 22 per kg. 22 per kg. Yeah. That's almost triple the price. Yeah. You're doing well. So now I can see that the sorghum is in the sacks and uh, the next thing is maybe to sell them. So uh, who, who comes for them? Titus is the one who comes for, the, for it. Titus. Ah, uh, oh, Titus. Smart logistics. Yeah. Yes, I know him. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. You mean he comes here? He comes here too. And buys the products from you? Yeah. Wow. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. 
keep it up, keep it up. Let me go look for Titus, okay? Okay. Good, keep it up. Well done. So Titus, I'm happy to hear from Angela that you visit here and buy the sorghum off them. Yes. Why are you encouraging farmers to plant this particular variety called Gadam? Because there's a ready market for every production from the farmers. Mm -hmm. And how are the market prices? Uh, Gadam, compared to Serena, it has um, a higher price because we have, if a group organizes themselves to make about 10 tons, we buy each kilo at 25 shillings per um, per kilo. Mm -hmm. If, if um, a group has about five bucks, we'll buy at 24 shillings per kilo. Mm -hmm. So it varies from how much a group has. What do you guarantee the farmers in case of crop failure? We register the farmers to an insurance company. Mm -hmm. They insure in terms of the acreage each farmer has. We expect 12 bucks from each acre of Gadam. Mm -hmm. So if there is a crop failure, they are rewarded with five bucks per each acre. Per each acre, yes. in case of massive crop failure. Yes. Meet George and his wife, Rose. They have four grown-up children who've all left home. They've lived on this shamba in Budiga for over 16 years. Working hard together, they grow a variety of crops. But their main income depends on their cows, which are zero grazed. In fact, only the day before we arrived, one of their cows gave birth to a baby calf called Gloria. Now, that's the good news. But the bad news is that George and Rose are suffering all sorts of problems and are desperately in need of some expert advice. So we pitched up and got down to business. They certainly could do with some help, don't you think, Naomi? Absolutely. So let's start right away and take a look at the zero grazed cows. And to make sure George and Rose get the very best, we invited John Mwangi, an animal production specialist from Coopers, to join us. Good Napier grass is a mainstay of a cow's diet. But sometimes this diet could do with a boost. So before John leaves the shamba, he introduces George and Rose to some important supplementary feeds which will ensure their cows attain tip-top condition. It is not as costly as you might think to practice zero grazing successfully. A cattle shed can be made over without too much outlay using materials found on the shamba. And to keep a herd well fed and healthy will pay good dividends in the long run with a huge increase in your milk supply and of a much better quality. Put simply, more income and a greater profit. George and Rose, we are very happy to be back here in your farm. Tell me, how has it been? It has been very, very wonderful. Since you went away and you showed me how to, to work, it has been very wonderful. How are your cows? My cows, as you can see, they are okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much milk are you getting now? At present, I'm getting 16 liters a day. 16 liters a day? Yeah, 16 that's, that's, liters a day. That's a lot of milk. Yeah. And how much were you getting before? Uh, before, because the shade was not good, I was just getting eight. Eight? Yeah. So you are now doubling up. The milk production is going up. Are you selling the milk? Yeah, at present I'm selling <laughs> the milk. <laughs> good, yeah. good. How has the results helped you in your life? My production has gone up mm -hmm. and I'm selling my milk. Yes. I have now been able to buy a chaff cutter. You did what? Yes. You bought a chaff cutter? I bought a chaff cutter. From the profits from the milk? From the profit of the milk I have been selling. Ah, yeah, yeah. You managed to get yourself yeah. And how has it been with the chaff cutter? Ah, this is now, this is now another wonderful thing. Yes. A chaff cutter has helped me a lot because before I was always cutting my hands. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And now my cows were, were not finishing the, the food I have been giving them. Yes. And then at present I'm able to ration them. I um, now have a measuring can here and I measure them. I, each cow I give it three buckets. Wow. Yeah. Is it a lot of work using the chaff cutter? Ah, no, 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 no. 
Mm. It has made my work easier. <laughs> <laughs> terrific, yeah. terrific. Yeah. I'm really proud of you. Yeah. I'm Thank happy you. to hear that. Yeah. Water is the lifeblood of any shamba. It is crucial for the cows as well as the crops. And if it is scarce or not harvested well, there will always be difficulties as Rose knows only too well. Down with the old and up with the new. Mwangi's army goes on the attack. What about you, Rose? Yeah, it's been raining for a while now. Yes. Have the gatherings helped? Yes. How? They help a lot. Uh -huh. They they put a lot of water in the tank. Uh huh. And the, the water can go for some weeks without right. getting finished. Uh huh. Now there is a plenty of water here. There is right. no problem here. Uh -huh. I can give my water, my cows, wash my clothes. Right. Pour my vegetables. Right. There is no problem here. I'm happy for you. Yes, even <laughs> right. me, I'm very happy. It helps a lot. Okay, good for you. Yes. And what else have you been doing in the farm since we left here? I have now a small shamba of vegetables. George and Rose grow many different crops on their shamba and make some extra cash by selling the surplus in the local market. But unfortunately, not all their crops are thriving. So we've called upon Julius Nyambicha, an agribusiness specialist from ARM, to see what they could be doing wrong. The first thing that a farmer should do when uh, planting vegetables, especially spinach, is to prepare the land. Prepare the land well, and it's best done when it's still dry, when it's still not raining. Yeah, the second thing is to prepare the holes. The holes are um, 10 centimeters apart and 30 centimeters between the rows. Once this is done, then the farmer should bring the manure and mix it well with the soil. After that, the farmer should bring the fertilizer, which is usually a bottle top, mix it well with the mixture of the soil and the manure. After that, the farmer now plants the spinach, and after the planting, the spinach should be covered well and the soil farmed around the spinach and then water the plant because it is, it's important to water this plant so that it can have that water and the strength before it rains, if it's going to rain. And if it's under irrigation, then the first thing that the farmer should do is to water the planted spinach. And at present, I have an order of Italian spinach. Italian spinach. Uh, yeah. You're now dealing with Italians. I'm now dealing with. I'm now. No. I'm now. At present, I'm not dealing with the local ones. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they they buy from you. I have an order. There is someone who always comes once a week to collect those vegetables. Wow. Wow. Hmm? And take them. So they buy directly from you. Yeah. Now they buy directly from me. And apart from Italian spinach, what else do you have? My sukuma wiki yes. for eating. For my domestic use. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful to hear how you've been getting on. Mm -hmm. And it's good to hear the chaff cutter is helping you. Yeah. Which reminds me of the Napier grass. Zero grass cows need lots of fodder, such as Napier grass, which can be grown easily on the shamba. But it has to be planted correctly to get the best results. And George and Rose's Napier grass is not looking good. So while the cows settled down, we've called in Francis Givonje, a soil specialist from IFDC, to advise them on how to improve their crop. The spacing is not uh, correct. Okay. There are so many gaps mm -hmm. within the farm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we need to show you proper spacing. Another way to improve uh, your napier grass yes. is to keep it clean uh -huh. by removing these weeds. Okay. Yeah, and you also need to be applying some fertilizer and manure. Okay. Yeah, so I want us to make uh, some holes yeah. so that we can uh, plant the napier grass. Okay. Yeah. The holes should be 30 centimeters deep and half a meter from one another. And each row should also be about half a meter apart Put in manure, 
Then add some fertilizer and mix the two together. Plant the cane at least two nodes deep, leaving at least one node above the ground and firm it in. You can also plant napier splits, which grow quicker, and this is how you prepare them. Trim most of the green leaves from the top, then plant it the same way as the cane, using a mix of manure and fertilizer. And there's no need to water. The napier grass should be ready to cut in two to three months time. Make sure all your land is used. Plant up empty spaces with either canes or splits and don't forget to chop the napier grass into small pieces before you feed to the cow as it aids with digestion. If you already grow napier grass on your shamba, it's worth following Francis' expert advice and plant it with these new methods in mind. And remember that when you are cutting your napier grass, to leave a short stump above the ground several inches long, as this will encourage the grass to grow back many fresh stems, all the more for your zero grass cows. Yes. And now I am practicing it, and now the one I have planted before, yes. it has now been very good, and even if you look at the stock, it is very healthy. Terrific. Well done. Keep it up. Thank you. Are truly you. shaped up. Thank, Thank you. you.